the next presentation by Hans Lingemann, CEO of Winkle, and Stan Noops from International Flavors Fragrances, is going to teach us how to walk the talk. Or in other words, um, how being roughly right is better than being precisely wrong. So uh, without further ado, welcome, gentlemen. One of the biggest challenges I have in consumer insights is uh, analyzing of text. And the paradox a little bit is that the better our tools are getting, the more difficult it is to properly use all the text that we are gathering. Fifteen years ago we had uh, we, 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 we did product tests, we had many open-ended questions, um, quite feasible to do it uh, ourselves. Seven years ago, we started with communities. A lot more text is generated there. The um, skills of the tools that were available to analyze all the text are not that useful anymore. Three years ago, we started with, with uh, scoping social media to see what text is on there. So even more text is generated and even more difficult it is getting to get some value out of the text. So it's a little bit like um, uh, boxing where you are trained to have a perfect technique, you know how to stand, but the moment you step in the ring uh, the first thing you do is look for the, where there is the biggest space available, where, where you directly see it, and that's often on the defense. Exactly the, the same happens with text. It's, it's very easy just to calculate positive and negative words. Uh, it's very precise, but often it is precisely wrong. What is a lot better if you're able to kind of punch in between the lines or punch in between the defense. The technique might not be good, the, the, the how you stand might not be good, but the impact is a lot better. We need to be, get better in understanding the, the text that we are uh, generating. I think it, 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 it's when I say it, it's, it's a very common problem. I think we, we all see that in daily life. How was your meal? Very good, thank you very much. But, but uh, from inside you know I'm never coming back again here. And this is very common, also in Consumer Insight. This is a real case of um, uh, we were developing a fragrance for Southeast Asia for powder detergent. We were very successful with that fragrance uh, except in one country, uh, the Philippines. We did proper research, we asked how much do you like it. In the Philippines also, people like the fragrance, it's very good. But it didn't sell right. When we dived into that, we really tried to understand and talking to the consumers who were using it, we were able to figure out it's about uh, the memories, the emotions, all those people that said, I like it. In the past they were doing hand wash and that was done at the river in the water. And the trees that were growing next to that river had the same fragrance, a very similar fragrance, as we put in the powder detergent. So although those people liked the fragrance a lot, yes, very nice, it also remembered them of the hard work, the hand wash they had to do. So we were not able to figure out uh, kind of the real emotion after uh, behind what those consumers said. We changed that and, and, and we made it back on that market. I think that this, this might resonate as well. It's, it's uh, when we do research, a big market is the man's market. Uh, shower gel for men. If we talk to men and ask, uh, 
Well, what do you think of the shower? What are your habits? All most men will say to you, well, it's, it's just to get clean. I, I, I step in the shower very short time. It's a functional shower. It cannot be more wrong than that. A shower is the most emotional moment for men to be in, almost. Lots of things. Um, uh, if, if, if you only look at um, um, uh, how long they really stand in the shower, uh, the music that they often are playing, there's a lot more going on. Men are not able to verbalize that properly. Uh, so with, with a normal text analysis tool that is not able between the, to differentiate between the tone of voice of man versus woman, it's very difficult. Um, uh, to dive a little bit deeper, uh, there are many segments that we can in tap into for men in the shower habits. So what's, what's, what's going on? I think it's, it's very similar to that than the... Uh, the boxing paradox, just counting the words or getting positive and negatives out of it, it's very easy, it's very visible, uh, programs can do that very nice, it's easy to measure, you have a nice number, but the importance is uh, uh, not there, it is really behind it, so it's much more about being precisely wrong rather than roughly right. So I met Hans at a uh, barbecue of the Dutch Market Research Association uh, two years ago, um, where I also talked about this, this, this problem that I had. So we started to talk about a, 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 a kind of an, a methodology, a tool that Hans was working on, where a text analysis tool that is not coming from an IT background, uh, but that is coming from a psychology background. Most of the tools are coming from IT. IT is doing what they are good at, counting. This tool is coming from psychology, doing what psychology is good at, understanding, um, understanding the tone of voice, how things are being said, getting the emotions out of the, the text. Hans will talk a little bit more about uh, the tool. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you, Sam. So, um, when we met at the barbecue, um, we were discussing within Winkle and Happen, we are in innovation, um, what the issues are with market research. Well, we have a very unusual way of talking to people. We all know that in quant research. Um, these are peanut butter cookies, and typically we use scales like this, and there's many other examples I could have given. Um, um, where we want to know how, what people think of peanut butter cookies. But how people really talk about peanut uh, butter cookies is something you can see on the internet by just opening some uh, social media. And you see people talk like this. It's just six examples, uh, literally copied from social media. People talking about peanut butter cookies. Uh, this is natural language. Um, and the dream of mar many market researchers is, uh, can you talk in... Uh, natural language to consumers on a large scale, unstructured. Well, yes, of course you can, uh, but then the next uh, challenge arises, and that's of course the interpretation of large volumes of narrative. Um, so, since January 2014, uh, we've set on a journey uh, within our company, together with our clients, to simply start experimenting with all the text analysis software around. And we've tested many, many systems, um, big ones uh, and smaller ones from startups. Uh, we talk to scientists. And generally, uh, what you see is that the text analysis software, because it's mostly uh, started from a technology point of view, um, is very good at counting words. It's very good at uh, uh, giving a value to a word and making, and, and, and that's, that's what it feeds back to you. Um, but here in this example, six, uh, six sentences, if you read them as a person, uh, which is the right column, what people really mean, and you let them, uh, uh, most of these uh, text analysis software, how, how they interpret what people say, is you see that uh, well, in three out of six cases they're wrong. So 
um, as I said, we did many experiments, and how we approach this is uh, we talk to our clients and said, well, you know, we, we, we agreed on a, on a, let's say, traditional uh, design, but we would also like to uh, test with a new uh, design based on text analysis software. You don't need to pay for that, we're just going to uh, compare the two. Um, so this is an experiment um, that worked well. I have to say, in the past year, we had, as you would imagine, very uh, a lot of failures. Uh, and what I want to show you is a successful case. So the experiment was um, it was a uh, it was about finding uh, opportunities to improve a recently launched consumer electronics device, which was extremely successful. Um, so you know, consumers were. Uh, eclectic about it, de delighted when they talked about it. And we were looking for new opportunities. So what we did is a traditional research design with an online community, four weeks, 50 people participating, sending 50 of these uh, uh, devices to these consumers, uh, quite a logistic uh, thing and uh, labor intensive. And during those four weeks, uh, we tried to have a dialogue with these consumers to, s to understand when you use this machine, uh, what are your needs and frustrations? Are there any frustrations? We compared that uh, to using a new technology, which in this case scraped 2,400 user reviews uh, off the internet and um, interp have, having these uh, uh, interpreted by a machine. Well, before I show you the results, uh, and this is not a validated model, but this is what in the past year we, 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 we found as a, a, a way to look at the text analysis software around, um, is to look at it in this way. So obviously you need a source, which is verbatim, you can find it on the internet, you can easily scrape it, one little thing, always check uh, the, uh, if you are allowed to scrape, because uh, for some websites don't want you to. Uh, the simple thing is just contact the websites and typically they will give you the uh, 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 the goal. That's the source. I mean, if you want to read millions of verbatim, it's going to take you lots of time, as we've heard many speakers say yesterday. So what you can do is you can count words, which we call uh, trending. So you can count if a word, how many times it appears, and you can see uh, which words are more important than other words. The next, next layer is to add a lens of basic sentiment, and every word is connected to an emotion. It's very simple, but we're, what we are actually looking for is a tool that can derive meaning from uh, what people say. And on our search for uh, tools, uh, you wouldn't believe it, we found two scientists in Devon. To give you an idea, it takes me 14 hours to go from Amsterdam to Devon. Um, and even from people in, in the, our London office, there, there's a seven hour journey. And these two scientists have been working 14 years on a system to derive meaning. And we thought that very interesting to test with them. These scientists have not been working on making their graphs look really nice. So this is the output from the system. Please forgive them. This is one of the lenses. They've got 20 lenses. And what is interesting about this lens is it's a typical emotional lens that you get from most text analysis software, but what is added here is a, is a emotion called frustration, which is, as many of you know who work in innovation, frustration is a very strong indicator for new opportunities. And as you can see, um, this is how people talk about this new device. Most people are de delighted, that's just the, the, the strongest bar, but there's also people who are frustrated. And of course you would like to see why. And this is what we got out of it. The nice thing is, it also gives you some sense, because you've scraped 2,400 uh, uh, verbatims, um, some sense of urgency. So from the community, we found a similar list of frustrations, which is interesting on its own. So the community, four weeks' time, lots of labor, had the same output as scraping, which is one hour job, two days putting it through the technology and interpreting and you get a similar list of frustrations. But also, something we did not found in the community, because with text analysis software, especially the advanced ones, you can compare many sources. So you can compare any text, like text on a poster or text from lyrics, to text that you find on the internet from people that talk in a natural language. In this particular case, 
It, this is a bike catch. We found that the manufacturer talks, that's the left bar graph, very scientific. You can't read the, uh, the labels, but the, the orange bar is how scientific la the, 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 the language that the manufacturer use. Well, consumers talk less uh, scientific, that's the, uh, the, 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 the graph on the right side, and more in an order way. It means they want to clearly hear how this machine works, which is related to one of the frustrations people had. It's a quite complicated machine. This is a bike catch that we, uh, we, of course, we didn't ask for this in the community, but in the technology, you can literally ask any question and you can see what gets out of it. I'm going to hand over to Stan because the, the, the response from the client was even more interesting. Building on the uh, uh, man shower habit, uh, a, a key driver of liking there is the concept of fresh and clean. We wanted to dive into that concept a little bit uh, uh, more, or a lot more. Um, and we were trying to figure out what to do best. So actually we uh, used both approaches, the uh, kind of a, a community where we talked, spoke to um, uh, 50 men in this case for two weeks. And we also used um, uh, text and, uh, analysis technology just scoping the internet, what people are saying, what men are saying about the concept of fresh and clean. Um, the, the, uh, the results were very similar. It, 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 it's not that one is getting much more insights or, or better tools, but the big, big differences are that timing of uh, the scoping internet is a lot faster. Cost is a, is a fraction, and what I found interesting, and I, something I did not realize, is that but with having such a pretty precise statements from um, consumers, the impact uh, internally is a lot bigger. The conclusions resonated a lot more with the internal audience, so it, the, the, a project could kick off a lot faster. Uh, people spoke more about it. There was more discussion internally. Um, same results, a lot of uh, additional advantages by just looking at um, uh, what consumers are really meaning what they are saying. So, so we are not able to change what consumers are saying. Uh, we have no intention to do that, but we are able to learn how to listen better to consumers. That's it. And Thank you. Thank you very much. We have time for one or two questions, particularly if they're from House Lambda. Anyone? Before I ask my question, I would like to say that I much like your example about the Philippines. But the question I have is, when I look at um, applications of text analysis, I find them indeed rather weak, with one exception. When you are in a supervised situation, so for supervised learning versus unsupervised learning, uh, they can be very powerful. Is that something that you have witnessed as well? Uh, can you explain a little bit what you mean? Well, with supervised, with supervised what, what I mean with that is that I've seen applications where, for instance, um, based on pre-classification, so for instance, documents were labeled by persons uh, in, let's say, two groups, A and B, so you would know what the good result is. You would then use text analysis to learn the relationship between the text and the classification in A and B. And then afterwards, you do it on a new sample where you don't know yet what A and B is. In these situations, I have found that uh, text anal analysis, let's say the traditional one that did not work well for you, yeah. works relatively well. Is that something that you have experienced yourself? Yes, I think that's, that's our experiences as well. So um, I think all the text analysis software that we tested is pretty good at what you just said. 
uh, but where it's not good at is exploration. Um, and uh, that exploration part is also very time consuming if you want to read all the verbatims. Um, so there lies the real opportunity for text analysis software. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think we're actually running a bit out of time. So, uh, but I'm sure Hans and Stan are going to be around if you have any more questions. I personally want to ask Stan about his mission, which is to make the word smell better. I read uh, in your biography. But thanks very much again, gentlemen. Thank you.